Konnichiwa. Good. It's a great privilege uh, to have the opportunity uh, to be with you. Before I begin, though, I would like to thank Chairman Hanyu and the Sasakawa Peace Foundation for inviting me to speak to you and for your work to strengthen the relationship uh, between our two countries. I do admire the Foundation's mission to seek creative ways for nations uh, and citizens to foster greater prosperity around the world, and I am honored, Hanyu san, to be a small part of this greater conversation. The 21st century uh, is the Pacific cent uh, is the Asia Pacific century. President Obama and his administration have acknowledged this reality through the changes they've made to U.S. foreign policy over the past three years. They've indicated that America's future in the world will increasingly be defined by our role as a Pacific nation in partnership with allies and friends such as Japan. So today I will talk about the Pacific century and the future of the U.S.-Japan alliance in that context. And I will focus my remarks upon three major areas, regional security, economic security, uh, and energy security, where I see the greatest opportunities for cooperation between our two countries going forward. In recent months, President Obama has made clear that the U.S. sees its future in Asia. Now, let me be clear, as America's oldest ally in the region, Japan will be central to that effort. President Obama called our treaty alliance and, our, and the partnership between our two countries the cornerstone of regional security in his remarks in Australia. Secretary Clinton echoed the president, arguing that our shared values, ongoing security efforts, and strong economic ties bring the pro promise of Asia, of America's Pacific century, to life. For, for proof of that strength and enduring commitment to, of our alliance, I think we have to look no further than the response to the tragic disaster Japan suffered on 3-11. Too, too few Americans probably realize that the name for that operation, Tomodachi, is Japanese for friend, but Americans were deeply impressed by how rapidly and effectively our two nations work together in the face of such tremendous challenge. And we continue to be impressed by the extraordinary resilience Japan has shown and how bravely the people of Japan have responded, uh, committing to build an even stronger Japan uh, in the future. Regardless of what happens at home, opportunities uh, to strengthen the cooperation between our two countries will remain. And it's critical that the United States and Japan continue to take advantage of them going forward. The most pressing is North Korea, where today's failed uh, uh, test of a 130-foot missile, which if perfected, could deliver a warhead more than 6,000 uh, miles, uh, we, we saw as a profound challenge to both our countries. Today's launch demonstrates complete disregard for regional security and for international law. North Korea's actions threaten the safety of its neighbors and will result in the further isol isolation of the backward regime in Pyongyang. Once again, Pyongyang has closed the door on an opportunity to take a step to join the civilized nations of the world in stopping the spread of weapons of mass destruction. The U United States is enormously grateful for the leadership Japan has demonstrated in partnership uh, with our allies in South Korea to show that North Korea's nuclear ambitions put the country completely out of step with the rest of Asia and the Pacific. I also want to take a moment to recognize Japan's leadership uh, in another part of Asia, uh, its commitment to a stable Afghanistan uh, in, in this regard. Thanks to a financial commitment made in 2009, Japan is providing a significant share of the salaries of, for Afghan's new security forces, as well as infrastructure funds and vocational training programs for former fighters. Yet even as we work together to address these ongoing challenges, we also must adapt 
our security strategy to account for emerging nations that are playing an increasingly larger role in global affairs. The United States strongly believes that the rise of one country need not come at the expense of another and that power does not need to be a zero-sum game. This is particularly relevant uh, to China. To keep our relationship growing in a positive direction, the Chinese government will have to do, I think, a better job of abiding by global trade rules and providing a level playing field. And the United States and Japan should work together to address these trade issues and to promote business models based on trust and mutual respect. To that end, uh, one of the biggest challenges we will face over the next years is the challenge of strategic trust. In many ways, the U.S. and Japan are still getting to know China, and that means misunderstandings are still possible. The Obama administration re renewed focus on the Asia Pacific has generated suspicion among some that the U.S. is seeking to contain China's rise. But it's important to remember that the United States is itself a Pacific country that has long supported China's growth and development. Ultimately, the recent rebalancing of U.S. foreign policy aims to help our countries and the region work and grow together and create a more stable framework. Elsewhere on the economic front, the greatest and perhaps most controversial opportunity for closer collaboration between our two countries uh, is the Trans-Pacific Partnership negotiations that the Chairman mentioned. There is no question that Japan's full participation uh, in the TPP is in the strong economic interest, interest of the United States, in my judgment. U.S. trade with TPP economies covers just over 5 percent of total U.S. trade, but with Japan, this almost doubles. In fact, as the third largest global economy, Japan's participation would make the agreement a far more dynamic and impactful one, uh, particularly if uh, the other NAFTA partners were included in the agreement. The Obama uh, administration, for its part, uh, has continued to pr push for conclusion of the agreement this year, even in an election year, uh, because the President believes the partnership will foster the kind of regional competition that will create stronger, more stable domestic economies in each of the partner nations. Uh, and the administration will continue to work with its Japanese counterparts on a path forward uh, for the negotiations that in the, is in the best interests of all parties involved. The United States and Japan should continue working through APEC and through other regional economic partnerships to advance clean energy uh, and climate goals. One specific proposal for using regional agreements to make progress on clean energy focuses on building out smart grid technology. As you know uh, from when some of your plants went offline after the earthquake, Japan's grid uh, itself faces major challenges already and will face even greater challenges if you move toward smarter system, uh, systems needed to bring massive quantities of renewable energy uh, onto the grid. Building smarter electric grids requires flexibility and innovation. And because many nations are just beginning this process, smart grid technologies and best practices could be developed better and faster through collaborative efforts between many countries at once. The U.S. and Japan, with our shared technology leadership, are well suited to lead that international effort on smart grid development. Uh, and through APEC, they already have a forum in which to do so. Fortunately, the United States is in a strong position to help Japan reduce its growing reliance on foreign oil. And the biggest thing we could do in the near term and in the midterm is to allow Japan to import some of our vast natural gas supply. Japan, for its part, is already importing more natural gas to help make up for its lost nuclear capacity. Japan imported 12 percent more natural gas than it did, uh, la imported 12 percent more last year than it did in 2010. But most of that gas comes from Asia markets uh, and from the Middle East at prices that are 
four times higher than natural gas prices uh, in the United States today. Together with increased oil imports, these costly gas purchases have helped eliminate Japan's trade surplus and cost energy prices to soar. America's natural gas can help fill the gap, and America has an interest in helping fulfill Japan's energy needs. The fracking boom in the U.S. has caused supply to grow dramatically, and natural gas prices in the, in the U.S. are actually too low for ma many companies to be able to profitably extract and sell natural gas domestically. So there's room uh, to give these companies the ability to export some natural gas to other markets that are currently dependent on more expensive supplies. Most importantly, it's in our shared interest to reduce our reliance on energy that comes from unstable and potentially hostile regimes. And as two of the world's largest oil importers, working to reduce our dependence on oil sends a powerful signal to the global community that we're seriously and soberly working to address that threat. But energy cooperation is, of course, just one part of our relationship. And as I've discussed here today, the United States values Japan's partnership immensely. Whether we're working together to build a sustainable economy, to increase bilateral trade, to provide for security, or to support regional institutions to which both our nations are partners. Strengthening our partnership in all these areas is of vital interest to both our country. It's a big agenda, Mr. Chairman, but I think it's a worthy one. As the United States begins its Pacific century, we cannot succeed without Japan's cooperation and support. Japan will have a strong ally in the United States to help you meet your energy, economic, and security goals. And for the region, the U.S.-Japan alliance is just as critical. Our partnership has allowed uh, the, uh, for growth and prosperity in the Asia Pacific over the past 50 years, and the region will continue to look to both of our countries for leadership going forward over the next 50 years. That the United States has turned towards the Asia Pacific reflects this reality, and I see a bright future for the U.S.-Japan alliance as a result. So I'm very glad to be here today, and I'm happy to take your questions. Thank you very much. I think it fundamentally uh, stems uh, from our treaty alliance uh, and the security that we've provided in this region over the last 50 years. And it, as, I, as I noted uh, moving forward, I think that being well aligned uh, on the security posture of both uh, the U.S. Uh, forces deployed and available uh, to the Asia Pacific region as well as uh, the uh, self-defense forces that, that Japan uh, maintains is uh, an, an important stabilizer uh, to create a stable region uh, and, to, and to stop provo provocative activity uh, that uh, could, if left unchecked, uh, begin to caused, the, I think, the Chinese to, uh, to take uh, actions that would be uh, unwarranted. Uh, ultimately, I think the peaceful rise of China is going to come by integrating China uh, into the, uh, as, as I think we've begun to do, into, uh, in the economic sphere, uh, into other multilateral mechanisms uh, that recognize the weight that China has in the world uh, and demands that it play to that weight uh, and play uh, fairly in, in a globalized system that benefits everyone. I think that uh, uh, one of the things that really has to uh, happen at the beginning is that there has to be a common uh, and shared perspective uh, between our defense forces about what the Chinese strategy is, uh, in particular the anti-access uh, area denial strategy that the Chinese are, are uh, employing. And I think from that common understanding of what the Chinese uh, strategic doctrine is can come 
uh, better alignment and better understanding about what the U.S. force role is and what the Japanese force role is in order to in order to counter that. I think the the decision to purchase the F-35 is also, I think, a, a, an important one in terms of uh, making uh, clear that the uh, joint operability will be a thing of the future as well as a thing of the past. Thank you.